Hey guys, it's KinkVid here, and today we're doing a Challenger gameplay analysis of a Challenger Fiddlesticks player in North America named Nick Home. And um, I think he's currently the only Fiddlesticks player in Challenger in like North America. I'm not sure there's any Challenger Fiddlesticks players currently in um, some of the other regions like Europe or Korea. So he's he might be like the only Challenger Fiddlesticks player right now. And um see that early game he places an effigy to watch his red buff and um, also see his art starting items real quick he um, goes hailblade refillable with um, a commencing stopwatch that's obviously part of his runes and um, he actually doesn't go control ward early and that's because um, when you get to challenger elo People will actually know where you place your early control wards, and they'll just instantly clear them if they're on the enemy team. So he usually likes to start with refillable because his control wards get cleared anyways. Anyway, so he's starting blue buff. He's getting a leash because he's against Graves, but Graves actually opts for a level one invade right here. He gets chased away. He's pretty low on health. He starts coming back though because I guess he's gonna try to like contests the blue buff, he starts draining, but unfortunately he gets outsmited by the graves and he dies for first blood. Alright, we're walking back into our jungle, we're level 1 at 2 minutes, that was a very unfortunate start. I think, um, Maybe he should have gotten one of his bot laners toward the river early. Would have helped out and not gotten invaded. He now just has to solo raptors to get level 2. He now does it, moves on to his red buff. So, um, the reason why he likes to start blue buff usually is because Graves players will like to do their red and then level 2 invade. But this time the Graves level 1 invaded and he caught him off guard and he ended up dying. And, um, this is actually Challenger Elo, so it might be kind of hard for him to come back into this game, but we'll see how he does. Alright, so he's almost killed three camps. He should be hitting level three off these Krugs. We'll see what he does from there, because he obviously can't pull clear, because Graves took the blue buff and Grom. Alright, I feel like he's probably just going to take the scuttle crap here. It doesn't look like top lane is gankable because the gangplank is shoved into the turret. Also, he probably doesn't want to gank mid too early because um, it is a Soraka mid. She does not have the most damage if you come to gank for her. Alright. Now he does opt to go mid because it probably is his most gankable lane and he doesn't really have any camps up to farm. The Vagar actually dies to the gank. The Soraka actually chunked the Vagar out pretty hard. Like the Vagar was like half half health by the time he came to gank. Alright. So now he moves on to his wolves. I think he was just checking with his E first to see if the camp was even up because if it wasn't, he probably would have just recalled instead of taking the blast count. Um, the Graves hits the Scrying Orb. He's probably trying to run back and kill Fiddlesticks, but there aren't any camps up anyway, so Nakum just recalls. Okay, maybe he's not recalling. He's going to try to fight for this Scromp that just spawned. We'll see if he can. Alright, the um, enemy Graves actually is not here, so he gets to take his Gromp. It's pretty good. I think he hits level 4 off of this Grom. Because um, he, he, he's still one camp short of a full clear, but he did get Scuttle Crab plus a kill, so I think that's enough experience for level 4. Alright, he's level 4 now. Instead of recalling, he's actually going for a gank on the enemy bot lane, but he sees that they're immediately backing off, so he just recalls. Never mind. They're fighting. Oh, but he 
does not manage to get a kill. He gets ignited though. All but the enemy support has to burn their flash. They're a tad bit greedy. Oh, but Soraka hits level six in the nick of time and presses R to save them from dying. All right, he's waiting in the bush. And he managed to get the kill in the graves. That was actually really clutch that the Soraka hit level 6 there. Because um, they actually all would have died if Soraka didn't hit level 6. And now the gangplank goal. Okay, wait, wait. Sorry, I didn't show that. I'm, I'm stuck on all. No. So afterwards, he kills the graves and the gangplank goal. Gangplank also hits level 6 and kills the rest of them. So that was really clutch from this global old solo laners. Like, that play would have gone really bad. Alright, now we're back to Nakone. Goes back to his jungle. He's gonna farm some more camps. We're just farming camps right now. Oh, he hints top because he sees that they're going for a dive on his gangplank, but I'm not sure he can get to the gangplank and save him in time. His gangplank's already pretty low health and he's like running away from him. Yeah, he was not able to save the gangplank. But he will be able to pick up some of this wave. He's just gonna last hit, I guess, to not try to shove the wave too fast. Alright. Places a control word. Yeah. So um, after his first bath, he bought sword shoes and amp tone, and also a control word. You guys, um, I should have shown that earlier, but we know that he's only gone back one time, so these would have been the items he bought. Alright, now he's hit level 6. Now that he's hit level 6, he's immediately looking for a gank. His whole bot side is up, but he knows that Vladimir is coming back to lane, and that he's level 6. Oof. Vladimir burns his ghost and flash, and he still dies to the middle six gang. So that is huge. This Vladimir is very far behind now. And um Kevin got a kill. He's finishing his alternator and then buying another amp tone. Alright. He um Soraka checked his jungle for him and saw that the Graves decided to take his blue buff because he showed top lane. But I think it's a it's a valuable trade on the uh on the Vladimir gets him a lot more than the blue buff would have, so it's not too bad. This game is actually like coming back huge from that unfortunate early game. Like they're actually winning now, even though he um, got early invaded by the Graves. All right, now he's killing his brawl, but there's some action happening down in the bot lane. sees that the Vagar is pushed up, but the Vagar is already backing off, so it's not gankable. And the Graves... Whoa, what is that Graves doing? The Graves is starting Dragon for a Nikon. This Graves is kind of trolling. He got like that one early kill, but um, he hasn't done much since. Oh, he smites the Dragon to make sure that his ult can't steal it. Now the Ez ease forward for the kill on the Tom Kench, but he just gets feared. And um, and the Cone is now worth a 400 gold bounty, and he is, he's he's got like almost the least CS in the game besides the supports. But um, because he's gotten like a lot of successful ganks off, he is pretty high level right now. Now he's able to ult to dive with Vagar and gets another kill. See his bounty go up, 500 gold now. So, um, this Graves, after his early invade, he kind of just, like, armed his camps. And, um, Cohn kind of took advantage of that window where Graves was just farming to, uh, to outgank the Graves, and he managed to get a gank. Um, his ganks managed to get him ahead of the Graves, despite the Graves, you know, counter jungling and stuff. And that's kind of what you want to do when um, you're playing against these invade junglers because, I mean, you can't really 
he did his best to contest the early invade, but he got outsmited. And um, he did his best to come back to the game by getting ganks off. And um, that's what these like counter jungling jungles do a lot of the, the time is that um, you'll see that they're constantly running into your jungle and trying to invade you. Then they run back into their jungle and farm their own jungle to make sure you can't take their camps. And um, it's kind of backfiring on this Graves because this Graves is spending all his time farming his jungle, and Nikone is getting off a lot more ganks in the Graves and impacting his lanes a lot more. Also, the um, the early play where the uh, clutch Soraka and Gangplank ultimates really helped out as well. Now his bot lane is just hard winning. Alright. He knows his ultimate is almost back up. He's already farmed his top side, so... Alright, yeah, he's just being patient because, um... He's waiting for the, yeah, he's just waiting for the Vladimir to walk into his ult range and ulting on him. Because if you, if you ult onto Vladimir without getting your fear off with your ultimate, the Vladimir is just going to pull and run away. You don't want that to happen. You just play some patiently. And now, this game is pretty much over, honestly. They're up 10 kills, even though they got invaded early. He's going to take Rift Herald. I mean... None of the top side camps are up in either jungle, so at this point you just want to go for Rift Herald. And like, um, you'll probably get more off Rift Herald than farming his bot side camps at this point. Man, his bot lane is just destroying the enemy team at this point, though. Alright, let's speed it up. Got the Rift Herald, he kills his Gromp, goes for the Scuttle Crab. Alright, right here. His ultimate is not off cooldown yet. But it almost is. He's waiting for the cooldown, I think. Alright, now his ultimate is off cooldown. But the Vagar has left his vision. It's not really an ult range. But you've got the Tom Kench coming forward, so yeah. Just four man the enemy mid laner. And now he's probably gonna rift and take this mid turret right here. Yeah. So, um, you've already got like a huge gold lead. Your bot lane is winning now. You got off some good ganks. You just wanna, um, you don't wanna like slouch off because, um, comebacks can still happen even in Challenger Elo. So you just wanna keep getting objectives like turrets and rift heralds and, um, deny as much of the enemy team as possible. Now he's tanking the turrets because um, well <laughs> I think he was trying to get the Rift Herald to live as long as possible but uh, I think he overestimated how much how many turret shots he could take. That's alright. His team is already pretty far ahead and it looks like his Tom Finch and Senna are going to do the dragon. Let's see, we'll just wait for him to respawn. Alright, he's back. He's running top lane because um they've they have added objective bounties to this game. And um unfortunately they could not get to the top turret in time to deny the objective bounty. But Vladimir is still pushed up a little bit. Oh but he he senses that there's maybe a few people top. Alright, and he holds the Vladimir, gets the kill off of him. I don't know if you guys, it's, it's happened a few times this game, but Fiddlesticks' W is actually what's called a tether, and a tether works on champions even when they go untargetable, which is like Vladimir doing during his pool. Yeah, he's, oof. The Soraka, he won't, the Soraka ults are just coming in clutch this game. Honestly, this is, this is actually so hard for the enemy team to play out, because this team, Kone's team has three globals that they have to be careful for. So yeah. But anyways, Fiddlesticks' W still goes off when Vladimir pulls because it's, it's a tether, and tethers stay attached to champions even when they go untargetable, which is um, Vladimir during his W, or Fiddlestick, I mean, um, 
Fizz during his E. Um, there's some other untarget ability in the game, like... Uh, yeah, Viego during his, like, when he's possessing a body, your, your drain is still attached to him. And, um, I can't remember all of them, but just in instances like those... Um, you have to, you want to try to like get your drain onto them before they use their ability and you'll still damage them during it and you might kill them during it. Alright, he's just clearing his jungle. Sen is collecting the souls after him. I think they pretty much won the game here for now, but we'll just watch him close it out. Alright, he's taking the enemy rafters because his team's just ahead. Alright. Now he's ulting on this poor Ezreal. This Ezreal is like, he's 0 and 7. This Ezreal is not having a great game. Alright, the enemy team is trying to do their best to come back into this game. So they're trying to um, kill the gangplank top lane and get that objective bounty on the turret up there. Because um, they know that Nikon's whole team is bot side, so there's nothing they can do. Bot side. It's not a bad idea. Cone's coming up here. He sees that the graves is still here. Um, his ultimate is not up, so he cannot just ult the graves here. But he is running at the graves, trying to see if the, the graves tries to fight him. The graves does choose to fight him, and he gets ignited by the karma. He uses his stopwatch, but. I'm not sure he gets to live this one. The Soraka flash heals, but oh, the Graves flash cues. And the Graves is also going to kill the Soraka. But, the Cone's team is here now, and looks like they're collapsing. The Senna finishes off the Karma. Tom Kench eats the Vagar, and they finish him off too. Alright. This team does Rift Hero. Nikone runs to the bot lane because Vladimir is pushing bot lane. The blind ults the Vladimir, and the Vladimir actually had a chance to pool, but I guess he was getting greedy for his pool and did decide not to use it. Oh, this Ezreal is 0 and 8 now. This poor guy, he is not having a great game. Their uh, Vagor is also 0 and 7. Alright, there's Dragon here. Alright, we're just clearing our jungle. Speed it up. Jungle clearing. Alright, now his team starts up here. It's about 20 minutes in the game. They see some people bot lane. They see three people bot lane, actually. They've also got a huge lead, so they do have the opportunity to start Baron. It's not very fast, though, because Senna is not really a DPS jungler. He decides to ult in. He gets a kill on the Graves. And also killed the Ezreal. And I think they're just going to do Baron again. Sometimes when you're playing um, Fiddle Sticks, you see your team is turning to fight. You just you don't even need to set up for vision. You just need to immediately ult. See if you guys win that. Usually when you have a lead this big, though, and you're like 12, 3, and 7 on Fiddle Sticks, yeah, you can, you can uh, just ult when you need the fear. You're just going to run them over. And um, his item choices are actually Rocket Belt, Shadow Flame, and Sorcerer's Shoes. He's probably just going these items because um, he's just really far ahead. He's um, He's got like a Soraka and Senna and Tom Kent to protect him as well. So he doesn't really need the Zanyas early. He's already so far ahead. Uh, there's not really going to be anyone who one-shots him. But he does go for the Zanyas third because Zanyas can still be pretty helpful. Especially if like you're trying to end the game someone to like dive the turret, you can just ult over this wall, kill people. 
or under turret and stuff without you having to risk dying yourself. Alright, you're just going to shove out this wave. So um, once you have Baron, you obviously just want to push down mid. And he sits on his bush to the side to see if anyone walks up while pushing. But the wave is pretty far up there, so he's pushing. Well, he's um, getting a spell crab. Just fast forward a little bit. Alright, his team uses Rift Herald mid. He's just walking around the vision. He's just trying to clear out all the vision the enemy team has, making sure there's no wards right here, and just um, following his team. When your team, you don't want to ever be too far away from your team. So, um, since they're pushing this far into the base, he might as well just push up with his team. Enemy Vladimir flashes in and kills the Soraka, but he channels his ultimates and kills the enemy team. They're just wiped out. That was that was kind of fast. Alright, so there's a uh, Tom Pinch is getting hit, Vladimir flashes in, kills Soraka. But he just sees everyone running into him, and no one has any hard crowd control to stop his ultimate. Because he saw Vigar use his cage there, he just turns an ult, so he just kills everyone. The only way they stop his ultimate is if Vigar saves his cage for him, but Vigar, he saw Vigar use his cage, so he's free to ult. He makes the Ezreal go 0 10, and um, they're pretty much going to be uh, finishing this game. Anyways, um, I guess this video ended up not being as close as I was hoping it was. You guys got to see some more challenger gameplay, but this does kind of show you how to like come back from um, an early invade, you know, outgank the enemy jungler when he's just busy farming all his camps. And um, if you guys enjoy this video, subscribe if you liked it, and um, I'll be trying to push out more content soon.